Hello, my name is David Clark and I'm from the Developer Technologies Group at Adobe Systems. Uh, this is the first of a short series of videos on Adobe's Creative Suite Extension Builder, which is a Flash Builder plugin for creating CS extensions. In the next five minutes, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use Extension Builder to develop an extension for a Creative Suite application. So you can see I'm currently running Flash Builder 4 and I've installed the CS Extension Builder plugin. So if I go to File, New, CS Extension Project, I can start creating my extension. So let's say we want to create an extension for Photoshop. We'll call our extension PS Video Demo and click Next. And now we can select which Creative Suite 5 applications we want our extension to target. So let's select Photoshop for now, click Finish. And Extension Builder then generates a skeletal implementation of an extension project for us. And you'll see there's just two files there. The first is this main MXML file, and it just consists of one button at the moment. And when we click that button, the run method of this ActionScript class is going to be called. And at the moment, all that uh, function is doing is getting a handle on the root of the Photoshop scripting DOM. So I could go ahead and run this extension now, but before I do that, let's just write a little bit more code that actually interacts with Photoshop does something a little more interesting. So let's suppose we want our extension to add a new document to Photoshop and color that document blue. Well, how do we do that? Well, I'll start writing the code that we need to do so, and you'll see that as I write, I get a load of helpful code hinting, inline action script documentation, and so on while I write the code as you'd expect with a product which is built on top of Flash Builder 4. Um, so there we've added a document to Photoshop and we've selected it. Now we want to create a color that we can fill that document with. And we set the colors RGB properties. So we said we want to make our document blue. And finally, we take the selection and we fill it with our color. All right, so I'm ready to debug this little bit of code. And before I do that, I'll set a breakpoint at the start of the code so we can step through it line by line and check that no errors occur. I'll right click the project, go to debug as Adobe Photoshop extension. And when I hit that, what happens is Photoshop is launched. and the debugger connects to Photoshop and now I can go to Window, Extensions, PS Video Demo and sure enough our panel window opens up and it looks just like it did in Design View. So now if I click our Extensions button I'm told by Flash Builder 4 that our debug breakpoint has been hit. So I hit Yes to enter the debug perspective and in no time at all I'm debugging through line by line the code that we've written to interact with Photoshop. And as I step through this, you can see that the variables in the top right hand corner of this screen are populated. And just as if I was debugging a Flex or Air application, I can inspect the properties of these variables as I go. So let's just finish stepping through that code. And it looks like we've made it without any errors being thrown. So now if I go back to Photoshop, there you can see the document's been created and it's coloured blue. So in a matter of minutes, we've managed to create a Photoshop extension that interacts with Photoshop through ActionScript. So now if I go back to Flash Builder 4, say I wanted to export my extension now so that other people could use it, I can right click it and go to export, create a sweet extension and click next. And if I was to fill in these uh, values now and click finish, what would happen would be the extension builder would create the usual ZXP installer file for my extension, sign up with my certificate and I'd be ready to distribute it. Say I want to go back and make some changes to the extension, that, uh, so for example I want to change the menu name that it has and all these other things I decided when I first created it, I can go to the bundle manifest editor 
And that provides me with a nice UI for making those changes. So here you can see, for example, I can change things like the bundle ID and which applications the extension targets. And I get all the different configurable options available to me. So that was a very whistle-stop tour of Extension Builder, and if you want to see more, then you can take a look at the next video in this series where I'll be going through Extension Builder's various features in much more detail. Uh, for now, I'll just end this video with a slightly more involved uh, extension demo. So you can see my workspace here, I've got this PS Color project. And let's just run that in debug mode, like we did before. And once again, Photoshop launches. If I go to Window Extensions, I can run PS Color. And you see here that the extension has taken my Photoshop foreground and background colors of blue and red. And what it's done is it searched Flickr for photos which contain those colors. And the results of its search are displayed in these thumbnails below. And I can page through the results as I wish. Now if I go and change my Photoshop foreground to background color, so say I make the foreground color green, hit OK, the color's updated in the extension, and the search repeats itself. Say I don't want to limit myself to two colors, I can go and use a color picker instead. And this is just an ordinary flex color picker component. And I can add as many as I like to the list of colors. Go back to the images tab, and the search repeats itself. So once I've found an image that I like the look of, I can double click the image and the extension will download it for me into Photoshop. And sure enough, there is the image there. So that's everything I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching.